it is multifactorial all no likewise any disease causes of this cerebellar ataxia can be genetic can be inflammatory can be infective can be traumatic can be neoplastic metabolic many causes let me describe one by one the common more common first so most common type center in the center you see here the post infective post infective causes we see in the day to day practice a child of the, with the chicken pox recent history of chicken pox comes to us with the gait problem coordination problem so what is that it is acute cerebellar ataxia it may also occur after coxic infection eco or uh, infection or sometimes there is isolated inflammation of the cerebellum due to mumps virus epstein barr virus mycoplasma influenzae and etc sometimes there is a abscess due to staphylococcus bacterial abscess in the cerebellum itself sometimes infection of the labyrinth so these are few of the infective causes then congenital causes congenital is maybe absence of the cerebellar one means like in the zubert syndrome i'll tell you chiari anol chiari malformation dandy wacker malformation and kefalocele etc they may be the congenital causes genetic or degenerative causes yes they are also important in some syndrome like frederick's ataxia ataxia telangiectasia which is a neurocutaneous syndrome acute intermittent cerebellar ataxia spino cerebellar ataxia they are either inherited autosomally recessive or dominant they are genetic causes likewise inflammatory post inflammatory causes are the acute de disseminated encephalomyelitis adam paraneoplastic syndromes due to hormones due to secretion of the hormones due to various tumors they present with the opsoclonus myoclonus ataxia syndrome likewise also metabolic causes are very important in the metabolic what are the common metabolic causes metabolic causes may be vitamin e deficiency vitamin b1 deficiency a beta lipoproteinemia heart knobs disease mitochondrial maple syrup urine disease urea cycle defect and and number of the metabolic disease they may also present as ataxia they are the common metabolic causes but we should not forget at least some of the common causes like vitamin e deficiency multivitamin deficiency a beta lipoproteinemia quite common few of the endocrine disorders drugs toxins they are also predisposed to like uh, ataxia what are the drugs responsible this is a lead phenytoin carbamazepine alcohol benzodiazepine these are the drugs in excess dose or sometimes in the normal dose they can lead to ataxia some neoplasm like neuroblastoma pontine cerebellar tumor some of the uh, endocrine problems like the hypothyroidism vascular accidents vascular problem stroke stroke in the posterior cerebellar artery is blocked or there is a some hemorrhage or inflammation trauma they all all can manifest as this ataxia so the common causes of ataxia are either inflammatory genetic metabolic infective congenital etc so uh, timeline wise uh, the ataxia can present as acute ataxia chronic ataxia or episodic ataxia acute means abrupt onset of ataxia chronic is slowly progressing and gradually worsening and episodic sometimes there is ataxia sometimes the child is normal so any of these can be the presentation so we'll take all of them one by one first of all we are talking about the acute ataxia that is sudden appearance of coordination or sudden appearance of movement problem is called acute ataxia the most common causes are of course infective we say in our day to day practice chicken pox epstein barr virus enterovirus eco coxsackie they all can uh, lead to acute ataxia acute cerebellar ataxia especially in the infancy may be due to these viruses also these can be due to the drugs like phenytoin carbamazepine lead etc alcohol some of the posterior fossa tumor tumors in the cerebellum hydrocephalus demyelinating and cephalomyelitis adam 
or uh, basilar migraine, posterior stroke, stroke in the, the stroke or the thromboembolism in the posterior cerebellar artery circulation, neuroblastoma associated opsoclonus myoclonus, the paraneoplastic syndrome, benign paroxysmal vertigo, and GBS with its variant like Miller Fisher, in which there is hyporeflexia, ataxia, and ophthalmoplegia. So it is a variant, Miller Fisher variant of GBS can also manifest as ataxia. So when to suspect which feature lead to suspicion of uh, what cause of ataxia, where there are certain leading points, like when there is a history of fever proceeding to ataxia, we should always think about the viral infections as a cause of ataxia, like chicken pox, Epstein-Barr virus, coxsackie, mycoplasma. When there is history of some unknown substance ingestion or history of epilepsy, history of some addiction, we should always th think about the drugs and toxins as the cause behind ataxia. When there is history of some roadside accident, history of head and neck trauma, we should always think about the intracranial bleed, cerebellar artery dissection or trauma rupture leading to ataxia. Sometimes there is a child is alert, but still there is ataxia may be due to infection. If there is altered consciousness, always think about the stroke, toxins, adam. Sometimes there is a confusion, hallucination, somnolence. Always think about the toxins, adam, stroke. So altered consciousness will be seen in toxins, adam, stroke, encephalitis, etc. So these are some clues which can suggest something like fever, ato, infective, sochi, some history of drug, history of trauma, and then think about the toxins and think about the trauma. So there are certain signs in the clinical examination which suggest the etiology. What can be the etiology? What can be the leading points in the examination of the CNS which suggest what can be the pathology? Like if you see the knee jerk is pendular or reflexes DTR are pendular, and Romberg is negative. Huh? Romberg sign we all know, moving uh, one one foot, uh, one feet above uh, in front of next foot and alternate like this is asked to close the eyes and this is Romberg. If the child swing is face, then there is Romberg positive. So Romberg negative is cerebellar ataxia. Romberg positive and diminished TTR is sensory. Sensory most of the causes sensory. Just so see the ataxia can be cerebral, ataxia can be sensory. When there is meningeal signs, then it may be due to sorry, CNS infection, Kernix, Bredzinski positive, and neck rigidity. It can be due to infections. Sometimes there you see the splenomegaly, rashes, lymphadenopathy. It is highly suggestive of Epstein Barr virus. Sometimes there are rashes which are suggestive of again uh, infectious mononucleosis, Coxsackie virus, etc. Sometimes there is a nystagmus, speech disorder, dysarthria. It is suggestive of acute post-infective viral ataxia. Raised ICT, again suggestive of tumors and uh, intracranial ble bleed, myoclonic jerks, ataxia, opsoclonus, always suggestive of neuroblastoma, paraneoplastic, areflexia, motor weakness, C GBS. GBS presents as, as a lower motor neuron type of weakness, acute flaccid paralysis, with along with ophthalmoplegia, areflexia, and ataxia, Miller Fisher variant. So these are some suggestive features in the clinical examination which give us a clue about the etiology of ataxia.